This is Jim Grindle. Jim was a close friend and classmate of James Dean. I had the opportunity to sit down for an interview in their hometown of Fairmount, Indiana. And Jim starts by telling us how he met James Dean. I first met Jimmy right after his mother's death. And he, uh, we started the fourth grade together out at a little school called Westboard. It was the original Fairmount Academy. And it closed for years and then it reopened. And, and when it reopened, uh, I think my, my class, our class, was the first class in the old school. And it was such a big class that we had. I think there were 10 boys in my class. And there were three classes in one room. So it gives you some idea of the size of the school itself. But we met Jimmy, uh, came in, we, we knew about his mother's death. And uh, I think everyone kind of, well, you, they, we felt sorry for him. So we kind of went out of our way to be, to be nice to him and then realized later on it, it really didn't take that. Jimmy was a lockable kid anyway. So uh, that's kind of how we got started. When you guys were kids, what was he like in school? Uh, well, it, it, later on in high school, if you can believe this now, Jimmy was a quiet kid, uh, a little bashful, a little timid. That sounds hard to believe, but uh, he, was a, he was a competitor. He was usually good at about anything he tried. I, I, I can remember we were in art class together, and, and of course there was about four of us boys that we're pretty decent in art. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy was also very good in art. Did a lot of uh, drawings and paintings and that type of thing. And uh, a matter of fact, we were showing the uh, my senior chords, a picture of my senior chords, to some people yesterday, and uh, realized probably between Jim and I, we painted most of the senior chords. What what it mean by painting? We paint caricatures on the legs and of course had Fairmount Quakers up down the back and uh, the basketball uh, players and uh, just a little bit of everything. When it came to summer breaks, what did you guys do in the summers? You know? Well, of course, Jimmy was on the farm and uh, summertime I, I worked with my father who was a builder, so that kept kind of kept us apart. Uh, but some of the things, even before the summer came out, we, we would go out to the farm, out to Jimmy's farm. Do you notice I, I call him Jimmy because that's, that's what we, we went by in high school. It wasn't James. Uh, we didn't, didn't hear about that. But I noticed everybody yeah, around yeah, here everybody. refers to him as Jimmy. Yep. You know? well, it was quite a funny. We had, uh, of course, my name Jim, and I went by Jim, and Jim went by Jimmy. And I'm trying to think, we had another Jim, I think. I was on the b basketball team, and he went by Jim. No, no, he went by he went by KY. That's right. But uh, we all had we all had nicknames for each other back then too in high school. And it seemed to be a big deal. We called each other by our father's name. You know, we called him Jimmy. He he was Rack, and and uh, they called me Jake. That was my father's name. And I just, just silly things like that. <laughs> now you were a teammate with him in sports. Mm -hmm. and how many how many different sports did you guys play? Well, I didn't play baseball because I worked in the summertime. That was a summer job. But uh, we played basketball, uh, ran track together. In fact, we were on the same relay team. Uh, I ran high hurdles, and uh, Jimmy pole vaulted. Uh, see what else he well, We ran the half mile relay team together. Jimmy was, was a pretty good, pretty good uh, athlete, but he wasn't very fast. Uh, so he didn't really run the dashes. Uh, he would he would be in more like uh, long jump. We call it broad jump back then. Mm -hmm. And pole vault. I think he he was our pole vaulter that year. I can't recall his height he went, but. Seemed to me it was 10 feet or something, something that similar to that. I know he uh, did a lot of uh, 
what plays at school. Right? Yes. And uh, Adeline was the one that, Adeline Nall was the one that uh, saw the talent in Jimmy the yeah. first. And yeah. uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little about Adeline Nall? what kind of lady she was. Well, I could kind of mix Adeline with a little bit of humor and a little bit of seriousness and a little bit of this and that because Adeline was, she was a lot of fun. And just to kind of show you what kind of fun she was, we had her, uh, I say we, our class had her, the fifth period was right after lunch. Well, before lunch, we would, a couple of three of us would go up the stairway uh, behind the uh, auditorium and get up on the old fire escape and lean over and raise this big old window, crawl through it, come down through the, come down through the auditorium, up through the stage and back through her room and open her door. And by the time she got there, why, of course the door would be wide open and the kids would be going in and out and so forth. And she'd say, did I leave that door open again? Well, she knew, you know, we, we, she knew what she did. She knew, she might as well just left it open to start with, but she knew we got into it every day. Every day, it was the same thing. But she'd say the same thing. I forgot and left that door open, you know. And, but she knew, she, be, she's a fun gal. You know, I, I, I can recall some of the things that, that took place in, in, uh, in our speech class. And Jimmy was one of them. Of course, the, the boys always had to sit on the front row because, uh, so Adeline keep her eye on her, you know, got kind of mischievous. One day we were having uh, speaking classes, and one of the girls was up in front, and uh, she wore her brother's uh, blue jeans. Well, back then, blue jeans weren't like they are today, you know. They weren't popular like in high school. Girls wore dresses. But she had this, these pair of blue jeans on, and they were unbuttoned in the front. So she's she's up there giving her speech, you know, and you know, she got about you know, and well, he passed it on and on down. There's a whole bunch of boys we get to laughing. Adeline come up there, she's all right, you clowns, out of here. So she kicked us all out of class. <laughs> then she told Wilma Jean later, she said, you know what they were laughing at? <laughs> no. Well, your pants are on button. <laughs> oh, that embarrassed her, you know, but that just. That was just a typical class in, in Adeline's class. But she was, she got serious, uh, had some good plays. Uh, and Jimmy excelled in that. He, he, he was a good actor. That just, I don't know getting around that. He was serious, the rest of us were not. Well, I know that uh, at the memorial service, this, this last one, you mentioned about how he made the Frankenstein. Uh, oh, yes, yes. That picture of him as Frankenstein is just incredible. I mean, he looks like Frankenstein. Yeah, he does. And uh, I guess it just shows the degree of how serious he took things. Yeah. You know? Well, <clears throat> when he got this part, he came to our art class, and I helped to make this out of paper mache. We stack it on top of his head and just kept building and building. And, of course, he had a mirror there, and he's watching so for all this. And the hair itself, as I recall, was painted. We painted black way well, out back then, and I think, we probably use a pastel color to, to paint it, but uh, that, that's how that was made. When he, did he keep in contact with you after he first like went to New York and that? No, uh, we lost contract, contract. He was telling Mark there a little bit ago. I kinda, after we got out of high school, see, he went, he went to, I think New York, I can't recall where he went, New York or, or uh, California, I, I don't remember Yeah, I where. think he went to California first. Okay, for school? And then they, I think it was Whitmore that advised him to go to New York. Okay. You know, for the acting. But I lost, I lost track of him until I saw him in the movies. Somebody say, hey, Jim's on so-and-so uh, on, on television tonight. Well, television was very young way back then, you know. But the part I saw him in, uh, he had a part in Danger. It was a 15-minute thing. He was on, I, I seemed to me like it was once a week. And, uh, you know, he just crowd around. You, you, had, you had to see Jimmy on, but that's something, you know, hometown kid. And, yeah, I was going to ask you exactly. if you saw many of his TV yeah. things. Yeah. Because um, he did. I was, you know, when I uh, read about all the work he did in television, I just, 
you know, there's almost 50 programs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then in Broadway, you know, there was a few plays, but these programs, you know, he had to learn entire scripts in a couple of days. Yeah. And, you know, because they were shot live. And I was just wondering if you'd ever seen any of them and what you thought. And oh, here's Jimmy, you know, and oh, yeah. he's on TV. Well, he's just kind of, you know, you sit here and you know this guy. And here he is on the screen. I, well, that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> that, that's something different. What was it like the first time you saw him on the movie screen? Well, just kind of unbelievable on, on my part that I actually do a movie star up there on the screen. And it was my friend, or our friend, you know, I didn't say mine, it was, he was our friend. Uh, it was just kind of unbelievable, really. Adeline must have been pretty proud of that. Huh? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Because um, she uh, pretty much ran the memorial for years, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Um, Adeline was a character. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Did you ever meet Kenneth Kendall? Or? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I have recently met uh, another Kendall who is an art, a uh, sculptor, and he sculpts in bronze. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't know whether you've had the opportunity or not, but he sculpted the 1812 statue of the Indians way back when, and this guy is so good, you could, you could actually see the wind blow into these people's face that they're walking. Oh, it, it's fantastic. You, you got to see that. But anyway, if you don't mind me saying this, uh, we're trying to put together a statue. Yeah, yeah tell us about okay. that. Okay. Uh, I've had contact with him. His name is Kendall. He's out of, he's out really out of Sweetser, Indiana, over here, uh, about five miles east, west of Marion. And anyway, I talked to him uh, a great length a while back and uh, got some prices and so forth of what he would build a bronze statue. So what we're doing, we're selling brick for a hundred bucks a piece and we're going to put it uh, right in front of the museum, go right in front of the stair, uh, the uh, railing there on the porch uh -huh. yeah. to the south of the walkway going up. We're going to brick all that uh, grass out in front and Jimmy's going to be on a pedestal, and he'll be life-size, his actual life-size. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, people can, who would like to uh, get involved in this can send their, their $100 donation in to the museum, his, Fairmont Historical Museum, uh -huh. and uh, put on their check uh, what it's for, so forth. It's for a statue of Jimmy Dean. And in return, we will, uh, we will send them a certificate of appreciation, and, and it'll be signed by uh, some of the members of the, of the uh, museum and make it authentic and so forth. And uh, we, we really think it's going to be a, a fantastic thing because what we're trying to do after all this all this time, bring Jimmy back home where he belongs. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. I know you brought it up at the uh, memorial. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I I just thought it was just a great idea. Yeah. And uh, we're getting some pretty good response already. What about his image as a rebel? I know I asked this of Marcus, but what do you think about that? Well, this is all a, an act of Jimmy. Uh, I'd say he was not a rebel, but he could act the part. Now, what I think about this. <clears throat> Jimmy, uh, in his acting, I think he changed the world. I, I really, I'm very sincere about this. Um, but his acting, is, and you can, you can relate to this too, there's a little bit of rebel in all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And this, when that came on the screen, all the young people could relate to that. They relate to it yet today. And I think that's, it actually changed the world. It, it changed some of the things that a kid could do. Because back then, we were pretty limited to, to what we could get by with, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and, you know, the first time, I, the first movie I saw was Rebel. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, I think I was 13, 14. I saw it late night on TV. 
And I was kind of amazed that, you know, that back in the 50s that they, they got this rough, you know. It was, it was a pretty rough movie yeah. for the 50s, you know. Yes. And, uh, but that's the first time I saw James Dean, and he just, you know, there was just something about him that grabbed you. He just kind of yeah. draw. He yeah. just got a hold yeah. of you, you know. Yeah. And, he uh, did that. Then I saw Giant. Uh, I just wished he had been in it more, but still he was great in Giant. But I didn't see uh, East of Eden until, I don't know, about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Rachel bought the new release that mm -hmm. Warner's put out of the three mm -hmm. movies. And I think that's probably my favorite. Which one do you think's your favorite? You know, I, I've been asked this many times. Uh, of course, I kind of like Rebel, but the same token, he was so good in East of Eden. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm with you about his part in Giant. I think he should have been the main, he should have been the main character rather than, than the story about something else. Which, well, actually, I guess it was about him, but same token, I think he should have been in it more. Yeah, I do yeah, too. Yeah. Well, there was probably footage that was cut. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. There, but but um, don't you wonder what he would have been like today? Well, I just wonder what kind of film. I wonder. I wonder what kind of a director he would have been. Oh, he'd, I, he'd you been know, directed. he. Uh, when you got a 16 millimeter Bolex camera of your own, you know that pretty much means you want to start directing something. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yeah. out there making these little films. You know, and uh, I was just curious. That's one thing that really has my curiosity is yeah. what kind of what movies he would, he would have directed. And, you know, just what would have come out of them. I think he would have been very. Uh, Clint, Clint Eastwood, my way of thinking, has probably followed up where Jimmy left off, you might say, mm -hmm. yeah. because Clint is on the same, probably the same pattern that, that Jimmy was on, I believe. We were talking, I think, earlier about uh, some of the things we did out at the farm. Uh, so in the wintertime, you, you go out, go in the barn and you play basketball, and, and it's kind of an odd barn to play basketball in, but you play basketball, you play at any place, you know. You play on the side of a, uh, a building outside if you got a hoop out there, but when you got someplace inside to go, and there's several barns around at the time that we could go into on Sunday afternoon, this type of thing, but some of the things we did was climb up through the hay, and Jimmy, Jimmy had made tunnels up through the hay, and uh, you you know, you work your way up. Sometimes you'd be on the outside where you could stand on some of the cross members there, uh, or the siding cross members, and elevate yourself on up, <clears throat> get in, and then you go parallel across. Of course, it'd be dark. You just go by feel where, wherever you're going, and the first thing you know, you see some light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. <laughs> and run across, run across fuzzy things in there, and you wouldn't know, didn't know what you had your hands on. It turned out to be a kittens, you know, that type thing. <laughs> we, sk we ice skated around behind the house. In fact, the old pond is still there. We'd ice skate, go out there in the wintertime and have class parties and build a bonfire and cook hot dogs, that type of thing. Uh, a lot of fun. Whatever, whatever kids do today, we, we did way back then, too. What do you think Jimmy would think of the impact he's had on the world? I, I think Jimmy would probably kind of chuckle at it at about all. I, because I, re I really don't think, I don't think he would get to swell at it. I, I really don't. I don't think Jimmy was out. The reason I say that, he was back here. I've got, I've got to put this in perspective, but he was back here, I think it was in February, after he'd made a film. And uh, we got together, and he wanted to go out. He said, let's, you know, let's go so-and-so. And so and I said, hey, man, I said, I'm married, have a family. I have, have a little girl. And uh, Jimmy said, well, can we go down and see him? I said, well, yeah, let's, let's go to my house and see my little girl. So uh, meet my wife. Well, of course, he knew my wife. And uh, so we went down there, and my little girl now was about she had to be about three months, maybe, or four months, maybe something like that. And she just 
wiry enough that she liked to, so we, I'd kind of toss her over to Jimmy and we stepped back and we tossed her in the air and back and forth, back and forth. And she loved it, just, oh, she just screamed. She really dearly loved it. So tongue in cheek, I, I, I told my daughter later on in life, in fact, she still teaches gymnastics, that uh, Jimmy got her started in gymnastics. But what, the reason I say that, that he would probably slough it off or, you know, just kind of grin at it, he never really mentioned uh, particularly what he was doing. We just talked about old times, that thing. But uh, he was never, I don't think he was ever particularly big headed about being a star. That's just Jimmy, I think. Um, how did you find out he had died? What, what kind of impact did that have on you? Well, <clears throat> that was my, I joined the state police. I'd been going to, to, to school and uh, I was actually selected to be a, an Indiana state police officer. So that was my second day on the job when mother called and said that that Jimmy had just gotten killed in California. And he kind of stunned when he realized he was our my classmate, you know, how suddenly that life could be taken away from somebody you know. It was it was kind of it was sad, of course, but uh, it was kind of a shock really that it happened. And uh, I couldn't come back for his for his funeral even, but uh, it's a regimented outfit, and back then we were uh, restricted to our barracks until we got our first month or so on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here I am. I couldn't even come home to see my friend buried. So why do you think he's still popular to this day? Well, I still believe that it's, it's because of uh, his role in Rebel. He was such an actor. He, he could uh, take on the part, you, you might say, my way of thinking at least, that he uh, convinced people that that's who he was. And I think today people still relate to this. I, I, I really believe this. I can re recall several times being out at his grave site. As a matter of fact, uh, one time I was the marshal after I retired from the state. I was a marshal here in town and his head stolen, had been stolen. And after it was recovered uh, in Lafayette, when we brought it back, in fact, Mark and I went and got it, brought it back, and they put it back on, <clears throat> on the uh, tomb itself. And the television people were out and we were talking about different things and they were asking me and I, and I said why don't you ask that kid right there <clears throat> two kids that came I say kid probably 17 18 had came there from New York and they were down at his gravesite you know so they went over and they said why do you well, why do you like Jimmy D he said oh he was cool man and so that's that's what everyone relates him as being cool because of being a rebel. What would you like people to know about Jimmy that, from your perspective, that most people wouldn't know? Wouldn't know? Yeah. That he wasn't a rebel. He was, a, he was an ordinary person with a tremendous amount of talent. 